Do you, you guys remember the Masters of Song Fu? Such a good time. So I did Masters of Song Fu uh, one year, and uh, and I I uh, did three songs for Masters of Song Fu. I lost two out of three times uh, to Molly Lewis, <laughs> who is on this cruise and possibly in this room, but I won't call attention to her for uh, to not embarrass her. Um, but one of the songs I did win. Cause Molly did a song called Peep Fight about microwaving peeps. I'm, and like, and I, so the challenge was write a song that has 10 words, only 10 words. You can repeat the words, but you have to use the same words. So Molly's song was just like, Peep Fight. <laughs> that was pretty much the whole thing. Um, I don't feel like maybe she was a little busy that week uh, that she brought her egg in. So luckily I got to win that one. <laughs> um, but I wrote two other great songs during that. One of them is probably my most popular song. It's called it's about an anglerfish, which I'll sing a little later. But first, I want to sing this song, which I hate singing, but I'm challenging myself because I always mess it up. It's it's about um, it's ten words, uh, but it's two oh god probably two verses unless I forget one, and uh, and it's about that moment that you first see your partner after you found out that they cheated on you. But only ten words. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told anybody what this song is about. Because <laughs> um, it's kind of obscure. Uh, shoot. Okay. I don't think you know what you think you know. I don't think you know what you think you know, B. But baby, don't you think that I know what I know, maybe. Nope, that was wrong. What I know, maybe. That I know what you think I don't. There's too many. Mm. That I know what you think I don't know. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know that I know that you don't think I know that I know what I know. I don't know what you think I think or think you know I don't. But I know what you don't think I know. I know, I know, I know. Baby, I know that you don't know what I know. Baby, I know that you don't know what I know. Then there's a, a musical break, and then there's another verse, and then it ends. I'm not gonna try. <laughs> Best, best clap for just giving up. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. We're just gonna move forward. It's not giving up, it's moving on. <laughs> so one of the great joys of learning how to play guitar, if you ever want to do it, it's, it's just a, it's like, it doesn't take that long to get passively good at the guitar. The thing that people sort of, uh, turns people off guitar, I think, is uh, trying to get really good at it. Like Storm or something, like, you know, like, actually like, Like, eh, that takes forever. But learning like G, C, that was G. That was, I thought, learning, G, learning D, G, and C, and A minor, and like, and the, so there's all like, there's basically the same thing over and over again, and you can play like 90% of songs. So one of the great joys of, of learning how to play the guitar passably well is that you can sit in front of your computer at home when everyone else is gone and just sing songs that you like by yourself with the guitar. You can sing them at your own key, you can sing at your own pace, you can sing in your own way. It's, it's just like, it's the, and like, just try not to do it when people are home because then they will say, so I heard you playing and it sounded really good. And you'll be like, oh no. No, I didn't. No, it didn't sound really good. You're lying, and the fact that you have to lie about it makes this much worse. Um, so do it alone, at least in the beginning. Uh, but one of the, so one of the things I noticed while doing this is a lot of the songs that I like use you know similar chord progressions, and what I'm playing right now is a chord progression that is called the '50s progression because it was popularized in the '50s. So it certainly was around before then, and it's been around after then. <coughs> The, the name I prefer, it's actually on the Wikipedia page, it's called The Ice Cream ch <coughs> Changes. The Ice Cream Changes, which is sort of a lovely phrase, because like, it's sort of a smooth, happy... It's, yeah, you know, everybody likes it, like ice cream. Except for lactose like, intolerant people who hate this chord progression. But screw them. So you'll have heard songs from the 50s, like... Uh, Earth Angel, Earth Angel. Oh, Donna, oh, Donna, and 
the sappy of teenager in love. It may be in a different key than that. <laughs> but it continued being popular with songs you've heard from the 60s like Duke, 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 Duke of Earl, Duke, Duke, Duke of Earl, Duke, Duke, Duke of Earl. And I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. And then in the 70s, there's a song that's actually designed to sound like it's from the 50s by Elton John. I remember when Rock was young, me and Susie had so much fun, holding hands and skimming stones. I had an old girl Chevy and a place of my own. In the 80s, they took it and made it a little different and a lot more creepy. Every breath you do. That's how I hear that song. <laughs> they changed it up more in the 90s, though. They went from two or four beats per chord change to just one. She has a girlfriend now. She has a girlfriend now. She has a girlfriend now. She says, you guys don't do no much for me. No much? Whatever. <laughs> it's not always happy songs, though. It sounds like it's always happy songs. There's a Green Day song that uses it. I'm the son of rage and love. The Jesus of suburbia, the Bible of none of the above. On a steady diet of. Any, any Slipknot fans in the audience? <laughs> yeah, I'll sit to you. I did my time and I want out. So I do shit, pain. It doesn't talk. The soul is not so vibrant. The reckoning, the sickening, packaging subversion, pseudo sacrosanct perversion. But also songs that you have heard that are like recently very happy, and songs that I'm sure you love, like baby, 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 oh yeah, baby, 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 oh baby, 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 yeah, I thought you'd always be mine. Justin, is it baby no or baby yeah? <laughs> it's like. There's not very many words you'd think you could make them, like, actually be internally consistent with this. I know you didn't write it. You seem to be doing fine now. I'm sorry, I don't actually feel... Uh, poor guy. This, not, you know, when you have a really weird life, sometimes, nobody ever says no. And then you think it's okay to just get drunk and drag race Lamborghinis. Somebody needs to say no. Damn. <laughs> um, then uh, in 2011, actually the most popular song of 2011, depending on your definition of popular, and also your definition of song. <laughs> oh, 7 a.m. wake up in the morning, gotta get dressed, gotta get downstairs, gotta have my bowl, gotta have cereal, something's happening, time is rushing, get my eye, red is rushing, guys, my butt down to the bus, stop it, I see my friends. I see my friends, they're sitting in the front seat, sitting in the back seat. Get to make my mind up, which seat can I? It's Friday, Friday, I don't know where to Friday. Something fucking Friday, the weekend, weekend, Friday, Friday. Getting down on Friday, everybody's looking for a good weekend. So for people who don't know that song, it's Dutch Friday by Rebecca Black. I met Rebecca Black. She's a lovely person. That song happened to her when she was 13, which I was like, the worst. Can you imagine being 13 and being the laughing stock of a nation? She handled it very well. <laughs> like, you know, we all did stupid shit when we were 13. <laughs> right? Right? Have you imagine, like, actually, uh, there's a video of me, which I hope never sees the light of day, uh, at Universal Studios in Orlando. Um, they had this thing where you stood in front of a green scene and they put Spock ears on you and then you acted out. Did anybody else do this? You acted out scenes from Star Trek. Oh man, it was like a dream. Uh, me and my dad, like I was uh, a science officer and he was a captain. And you know, you read cue cards or teleprompters or something. And, uh, and you got to like be in an episode of Star Trek. Um, and it was really great then. I have a feeling that I probably didn't put in the best performance. Like, if I saw it now, I probably wouldn't be super impressed. So I'm concerned that that will be my Friday. 
but I'm I'm old enough now to handle it. Could you imagine like somebody like if uh, yeah, like that thing, like that video of me being the science officer on the bridge of the Starship Enterprise, like got leaked on the internet and was like a viral video when I was a kid, and, like in high school. Oh god! Man, I'm so glad I'm not young. There are, there are all these kids who are like, man, you'd be like, it's the best time of your life. And I'm like, oh God, I hope not. <laughs> hopefully, unless you're in this room, maybe it is. Like, if you're, if there are some teenagers on, this, on the Joe Call, and you, maybe it was the best time of your life. Because this is a pretty great time. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it being the best time of your life. There will be other amazing experiences, but they may not be as amazing as these six days. So thank you to Jonathan and Paul and Storm and all the other people who helped put this on. All the workers at Royal Caribbean and, uh, and all the workers at Joko Cruise. This has been really fantastic. Um, I'm doing this early. It just sort of occurred to me to do now. It's not like the show's about to end. I have seven more minutes, guys. <laughs> so let's have a round of applause for the amazing people.